I'm Professor Andrew Forbes. I'm a distinguished professor in the School of Physics here at WITS. We focus on three pillars in the Structured Light Lab. The one pillar is what we call classical light. In simple parlance, this means you know, bright laser beams, the sort of laser beams that you would have in your laser pointer or your, C your CD player or your remote control. Basically, normal laser light. And what we do is we tailor that light for whatever application we're trying to do. I'll give an example. The second pillar is quantum. So we do the same control, but at the quantum level. What does it mean to be at the quantum level? It means a single photon. That means one particle of light. Or we use it to create entangled particles. And the third pillar is we make our own lasers. So we make lasers that give out the structure that we want. And what do we do with these pillars? What do we do with all these tools that we have at our disposal? Well, we use them for communication, high bandwidth communication. But you know, in today's world, we don't just want fast connections. We also want them to be secure. We want fundamental security in our connection. And that's where the quantum comes in. So the classical structured light gives the speed. The quantum gives the security. The idea is that if you put your information into quantum states, the known laws of physics would have to be wrong for you to decode it. In the Structured Light Lab, we don't only tailor the light and use it for applications, but we also bring in augmented technologies, for instance, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Let me give you a practical example. <clears throat> if we structure our light in a quantum sense, we can do very cool imaging, imaging that you could never do in the normal world. For example, we can tailor our two photons, our two particles of light, to have two different colors. One can go through living tissue, and the other one can go to a visible normal camera. And we can see inside the tissue with the normal camera. So where does the, the AI and machine learning and recognition come in? Well, think of this as a quantum microscope, or a quantum camera if you want to use it to see behind tinted glass. We have a quantum camera that's based on our technology. But we don't want to just record images. We want to have an intelligent camera, a camera that can recognize scenes, maybe tell you that the person behind the tinted glass is holding a gun, or the cells under your skin are cancerous. So we don't want to just capture data. We want to, we want to try to capture less and recognize more. And another way to think about it is that, you know, AI, machine learning, all these, uh, fancy softwares, they rely on data. Without data, they can do nothing. And I guess our, our novelty is that we have both the hardware and the software side. We have the hardware that produces the data and then the software that interfaces to recognize and speed up the process. I have to say that I've been at WITS for nearly 10 years now. It's a fantastically supportive and encouraging environment. It rewards great science and it encourages the transition of that science to technology through innovation. So I, I believe that there's no barriers to making an impact.